All right, so in this problem, we're going to look at Atwood's machine. Atwood's machine is a, a disc that's got, or a pulley that's made out of a disc with radius capital R, mass capital M, and hanging from it um, by string uh, um, are these two masses, MA and MB. We want to find the acceleration of the system and the tension on the strings connected to each mass. You should already be familiar with the six steps of the Second Law Toolkit. We'll apply the Second Law Toolkit first with the linear system. Now the linear system is made out of the objects that are just moving linearly, in this case mass MA and MB. So mass MA and MB are the only masses that we're concerned about at, if we're looking at just the linear part of the system. So we're going to say counterclockwise, so following this string in a counterclockwise direction, we'll call positive, and anything in the opposite direction we'll call negative. These are the force diagrams, again, only on the objects that are part of the linear system, FTA upward, FGA downward for mass MA, for mass MB, FTB upward, force of tension, and the force due to gravity. So these two forces up here are forces of tension. These two forces down there are forces due to gravity. And as a note, I tried to make the relative sizes of these um, arrows um, somewhat um, to scale. The motion maps of our linear system include the mass MB upward, so it's starting with no velocity and accelerating upward. MA starting with no velocity and accelerating downward. We'll explicitly write the sum of all forces equals MA for our system. Now we're going to write the filled in second law equations for the linear system based on the steps above. So FGB, the weight or the force due to gravity of MA is pointing downward, so that's going to be positive. FTA, the tension on this string, is pointing opposite the direction of what we're calling positive. So it's opposite of this green line, so that's going to be negative. This force of tension is pointing in the direction of our green line, of our system line, if you will. We're going to make that positive. The force due to gravity of object um, B is pointing opposite our green line, so that's going to be a negative. The two masses together are the masses that we're going to focus on our system. So FMA and FMB are our two masses as part of the system. So we have to include both of them in Newton's second law and multiply it by the system's acceleration. So now that we've looked at the um, linear system, now we're going to look at each object. So first we're going to look at objects M A and MB. And so what we're doing here is we're starting the whole process of the second law, um, um, the second law toolkit over again, but looking at each object. So objects M A and M B. Um, since we call counterclockwise along the string positive, then downward for object M A is going to be positive. Again, counterclockwise along the string makes upward positive for object MB. So if we look at their force diagrams, it's essentially the same force diagrams, but we just, in this particular table, separated them away from the rest of um, the setup. We write down Newton's second law, step four, and step five, we write out our individual second law equations, again, for each object. So for object A, if we focus on object A right here, in the positive direction, we've got the force due to gravity pointing downward, so that's positive, the force of tension upward, so that's negative, and they're going to equal, or according to Newton's second law, that's going to equal just the acceleration of the mass MA. Now, um, oh, well, yeah, mass A times acceleration, I should say. Now, for object MB, we're calling upward positive, so the force of tension on, on the string, on object B, is going to be positive with the weight of object B being negative. Now, 
that will equal on the other side of the equation for Newton's second law, the mass times acceleration. Since we're focused on just object MB, we're going to just multiply object MB times um, the acceleration of object B. So the other object in this setup is the pulley. We called counterclockwise um, positive. So along the pulley, counterclockwise will be positive. Its force diagram looks like this. Notice this is a force diagram, not a, a torque diagram, but a force diagram. The force due to tension of the string on the pulley is downward, so there's string pulling it down this way. And then there's a force of tension from, um, from the other string pointing in this direction. Our motion map includes the fact that it's going to start off at rest with no angular velocity and it picks up angular velocity um, counterclockwise and the acceleration is constant. The second law equation for this kind of um, motion and um, these, kind, this t these torques is this, the sum of the torques equals I alpha. So if we look at um, if we just focus on torques, now these are torques, the torque on object A and the torque of object B, not their forces, but their torques, equals I alpha. The torque of object A is from this force. So let's see how we actually calculate that. We take the force on object, um, uh, I'm sorry, the force, uh, the, the torque on object A is the force TA times the radius of the pulley, that's in what we're calling the counterclockwise or positive direction. Because if this were to make it spin, it spins counterclockwise. And we call it counterclockwise positive. Now the, the torque is in the opposite direction for TB. So we're going to call that negative. And again, the way we calculate out torques is we take the force and multiply it times uh, the radius and that equals the rotational inertia times alpha. So now that we've got um, these three equations plus the, this, uh, the equation from the previous slide, we're going to take all four equations and see how we can solve them. So at this point, a lot of the physics is done. Just a little bit more physics to go before we um, get to our solution to figure out the acceleration. So like we said for the solid object, the way we can calculate out each of these torques is by taking the force on each torque and multiplying it times r. It turns out that that force um, is, are these tensions. So this is the equation that we just um, derived earlier. Now we know that the rotational inertia i of a disk is 1 half mr squared. So we'll take that equation and plug it into there. And then our equation looks like this when we plugged in the rotational equation right there. Our, uh, the radius cancels, that radius cancels with that radius, cancels with one of those uh, radii, if you will. And we end up with this equation. Now, we will use our bridge equation that says that the linear tangential acceleration is equal to R alpha. So we can replace this part of the equation, R alpha, with A. And that's what this will look like. Now notice what happens here. As part of this equation, we get exactly the opposite or a negative of this section of the system equation. So let's try to substitute this equation into here. But we've got to make this equation exactly like that part of that equation. So let's multiply both sides by negative 1. Multiply the left side and the right side by negative 1. And what that does is make this part of the equation, or this side of the solid object equation, look exactly like that part of the system equation. So what that means is now we can substitute this other side of this equation into that part of the equation to make the system equation look like that. So essentially we've substituted these two uh, forces for that expression right there. All right, so going on with the rest of this, uh, we know that the, oh yeah, so what we'll do is we'll add one half MA to both sides so we get this on the right hand side. 
Okay, we factor out the a on the right-hand side to, so that the right-hand side of the equation looks like that. We know that the force due to gravity on e any object, these two objects, is equal to mass times gravity. So the force due to gravity of FGA becomes MAG, and the same with MBG. Then we can factor out G on both sides, and if we, if we divide both sides by um, what's in this parentheses, this is what we get for the acceleration. So this is the acceleration for our system. Remember, that's also going to be the same as acceleration for each uh, mass. So let's apply that to our um, MA equations and see if we can solve for the torque. So I'm sorry, for the tension. So here's the tension FTA. Uh, we know that the force due to gravity is mg. We did that just earlier over here. Uh, so we know that this equation becomes that equation. We want to solve it for the tension FTA. So we, um, we essentially um, move that over to this side, move MAA over to this side, solve it for FTA, and this is what our um, tension on object A looks like on the string that's connected to object A. If I replace that acceleration with what we calculated for acceleration over here, because remember that this acceleration for object A is going to be the same as a system acceleration. So I'm going to replace this part of it with that acceleration. So that, so, oh, you know what? Before I do that, I'll factor out uh, MA. And now I'll um, substitute this acceleration into that equation to get this expression for the force of tension on the uh, string connected to object A. So for object B, if we want to look for its force of tension, let's solve this equation for its force of tension once again. We need to use the force due to gravity equation, replacing this force due to gravity with mg. That gives us this equation. And then we get, if we solve it so that FTB is all by itself on one side, this is what the equation looks like. We'll factor out MB to look like that. And once again, we'll factor in, or I'm sorry, we'll substitute our acceleration for our system because, again, it's the same as acceleration for object MB. Um, and that'll look like that. So there's our solution. This is the solution for the acceleration of the system and for each object. This is the force of tension on the string connected to object A. That's the force of tension on the, um, on the string connected to object B. If we want to find the net torque, the net torque would be um, equal to the difference between the torque on um, object A minus the torque on object B, which would just be I alpha. So we just solve for I alpha, we would find the net torque. If we want to find the individual torques, this would be this calculation right here would give us the torque on object A, and this calculation just for this part in the parentheses would be the um, the torque on object B, and that's it.